Hello, welcome to today's Daily Bible Reading. We're continuing through the history section of the Old Testament, looking at 2 Kings. We're starting 2 Kings today. And we're also going to be looking at the history section in the New Testament as we start the book of Acts. Let's pray. Father, open our hearts, open our eyes, open our ears. May we see, may we feel, and may we hear what your spirit would say through your word to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. 2 Kings chapter 1. After the death of Ahab, Moab rebelled against Israel. Now Ahaziah fell through the lattice in his upper chamber in Samaria and lay sick. So he sent messengers telling them, Go, inquire of Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover from this sickness. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say to them, Is it because there is no god in Israel that you are going to inquire of Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron? Now, therefore, thus says the Lord, You shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. So Elijah went. The messengers returned to the king, and he said to them, Why have you returned? And they said to him, There came a man to meet us, and said to us, Go back to the king who sent you, and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Is it because there is no God in Israel that you are sending to inquire of Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron? Therefore you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. He said to them, What kind of man was he who came to meet you and told you these things? They answered him, He wore a garment of hair with a belt of leather about his waist. And he said, huh, It is Elijah the Tishbite. Then the king sent to him a captain of fifty men with his fifty. He went up to Elijah who was sitting on the top of a hill and said to him, A man of God, the king says, Come down. But Elijah answered the captain of the fifty, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty. Then fire came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Again the king sent to him another captain of fifty men with his fifty. And he answered and said to him, O man of God, this is the king's order. Come down quickly. But Elijah answered them, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty. Then the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Again the king sent the captain of a third fifty with his fifty, and the third captain of fifty went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and entreated him, O man of God, please let my life and the life of these fifty servants of yours be precious in your sight. Behold, fire came down from heaven and consumed the two former captains of fifty men with their fifties, but now let my life be precious in your sight. Then the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, Go down with him, do not be afraid of him. So he arose and went down with him to the king, and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Because you have sent messengers to inquire of Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron, is it because there is no god in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. So he died according to the word of the Lord that Elijah had spoken. Jehoram became king in his place in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, because Ahaziah had no son. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaziah that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? So just a reminder when it mentions the, the, the book of Chronicles, it sounds like the biblical book of Chronicles that we have in our canon of Scripture, but it isn't. It's another record from which the one who was putting this together had access to. We don't have any access to it today. Chapter 2. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel, and the sons of the prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha, and said to him, 
Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he said, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. Elijah said to him, Elisha, please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The sons of the prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Keep quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the sons of the prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his cloak and rolled it up and struck the water, and the water was parted to the one side and to the other, till the two of them could go over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, Please let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. And he said, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if you do not see me, it shall not be so. And as they still went on and talked, behold, the chariots of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. And he took up the cloak of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the cloak of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And when he had struck the water, the water was parted to the one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. Now when the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho saw him opposite them, they said, The spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. And they said to him, Behold now, there are with you your servants, fifty strong men. Please let them go and seek your master. It may be that the Spirit of the Lord has caught him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And he said, You shall not send. But when they urged him till he was ashamed, he said, Send. They sent therefore fifty men. And for three days they sought him, but did not find him. And they came back to him while he was staying at Jericho. And he said to them, Did I not say to you, Do not go? Now the men of the city said to Elisha, Behold, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord sees, but the water is bad, and the land is unfruitful. He said, Bring me a new bowl, and put salt in it. So they brought it to him. Then he went to the spring of water and threw salt in it and said, Thus says the Lord, I have healed this water. From now on neither death nor miscarriage shall come from it. So the water has been healed to this day, according to the word that Elisha spoke. He went up from there to Bethel, and while he was going up on the way, some small boys came out of the city and jeered at him, saying, Go up, you bald head, go up, you bald head. And he turned around, and when he saw them, he cursed them in the name of the Lord. And two she-bears came out of the woods and tore forty-two of the boys. From there he went on to Mount Carmel, and from there he returned to Samaria. All right, the, the, the thing I, that, that is really, really apparent here is that we're in the northern kingdom, uh, the kingdom of Israel or Ephraim. And we have the rise of the prophets, Elijah and now Elisha. We also have this, this group called the school or the sons of the prophets. And what we see is that at their word, God moved very forcibly, very powerfully. We see the, the two battalions of soldiers who were killed by what is called fire from heaven. And then at, at this instance, when Elisha also uh, speaks a word against these these young boys, uh, forty two boys. Um, the the word of the Lord came to pass there too and brought destruction. So it brings 
it brings a fear of the Lord uh, associated with these with these prophets. And so from this point, we will see the prophets speaking the word of the Lord. And as we go through the, the prophets in the, the book of the, the section called the prophets in the Bible, we will see how highly regarded they were. Now we come to the book of Acts, a completely different spirit. Uh, we note that on the day that the law was given, uh, it says that 3,000 people died. They were slain by, their, by the Levites, actually. And what we're going to see here is the day that the spirit is given, 3,000 souls are won into the kingdom. So that's, And it contrasts the Old Covenant with the New Covenant. So this is Acts chapter 1. And Acts is actually the second part, volume 2, if you will, of the Gospel of Luke. We'll be reading the Gospel of Luke closer to the Christmas, the Advent season. And, but just, just to be aware that this is part 2 of Luke's Gospel. In the first book, and that's why, that, that this tells you it's the second part. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized you with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now, there's, a, I think, a distinction that can be made here, and this is usually the basis for what's referred to as Pentecostalism. And the basis is this. John baptized people on the basis of their public repentance their profession of faith, then they were baptised. In other words, water baptism was always subsequent to something in particular. In the same, in the same reference, Christ is, has told his disciples, this has happened, you, you have been brought into the kingdom, and then, subsequent to this, you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. Now, we know no one can come into the kingdom of God unless they are born of the Spirit. Jesus said that. You can't even see the kingdom unless you've been born of the Spirit, John chapter 3. So what we have here is a baptism of the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Spirit, however you want to, uh, to describe it, that is subsequent. In other words, it comes after someone is saved. So this should tell us a couple of things. Firstly, there are extreme Pentecostals who teach that you need to be baptised with the Holy Spirit in order to be saved. Well, that's not true. It's subsequent to salvation. And it should also tell us, for those who, who believe that the baptism in the Holy Spirit is synonymous with regeneration, that is being born again, they're not necessarily Pentecostals who teach this, that it, it, it's, it's, again, it's distinct from regeneration. It's a subsequent experience. That's just, by the way, all right, let's continue on. Verse 6. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And that right there is the outline for the book of Acts. It will follow that outline. It will show how they bore witness in Jerusalem, then they bore witness in Judea, then they bore witness in Samaria, then they went to the end of the earth. And the end of the earth will be signified as Rome. And, and so it just shows human perspective. All right. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, Two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking to heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when he had entered, they went up to the upper room 
where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the zealot, and Judas the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer, together with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and his brothers. In those days Peter stood up among the brothers, the company of persons was in all about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle, and all his bowels gushed out. And it became known to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their own language, Acheldama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, May his camp become desolate, and let there be no one to dwell in it, and let another take his office. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Now, there's, there is some things that we, we need to uh, recognize here. Firstly, the description of Judas's death describes his bowels being spilled out. He fell headlong and his bowels gushed out. Sounds a pretty graphic picture. Whereas the, the gospel account has that he hanged himself. And these two are in concordance because what would have happened in the heat, in that Middle Eastern heat, he would have hanged himself, his body would have swelled, the rope would have broken, the branch would have broken, he would have fallen headlong and burst open. That's a part of the, the process that would have, rigor mortis and so on, that would have happened. Secondly, why did they feel the need to replace him? Why did they feel the need that there had to be 12 apostles who all met the criteria of seeing Christ and seeing him uh, crucified and raised from the dead? Witnesses to his resurrection, Peter says. Why? Because there was a correspondence between these 12 apostles of the Lamb and the 12 tribes of Israel. And so we have the 12 from the Old Testament, who I will argue in the book of Revelation are called the uh, 12 elders. And then we have the 12 apostles of the Lamb, who are also 12 elders. And they become what the book of Revelation describes as the 24 elders. In other words, both Old Covenant and new covenant point to Christ. All right, chapter 2 of Acts. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues or languages, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, and at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues 
the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. Well, so they've in Acts chapter 1, they're in the upper room, in Jerusalem, in the upper room. And now they've moved into the temple precinct where the Holy Spirit has come. Mighty rushing wind. They're in that, that precinct of the temple. Now remember, this is not that long after uh, many, many uh, pilgrims had come for the, for the festival season in Israel, in Jerusalem. And so they are in the temple precinct and the people in that precinct are hearing what's going on. So then it says, verse 14, But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed the men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. Now we've just finished reading Joel. And this is how he cites it. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapour and smoke, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received him, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this, that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, the Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children, and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness, and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about three thousand souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers, and awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, 
praising God and having favour with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. And it shows the, the powerful, glorious birth of the church. The time, the day when the Holy Spirit was initially poured out and they spoke with tongues and they prophesied and, and the people who came from all across the known world saw and heard in their own language these Galileans, which is code for uneducated people, speaking in their own language the things of God. Oh, man, powerful. The, that, that fire came in association with this, tongues of fire, was something that God did whenever he initiated something. And we see, we'll see this through the Old Testament as well. Solomon dedicated the temple, fire came down. Moses dedicated the tabernacle, fire came down, and so on. So fire is an initiation uh, sign from God. So today we don't need to have tongues of fire come down because it was already initiated back on that day, that particular day of Pentecost. But the Holy Spirit is still available today for each one of us. And I pray that your heart will hunger to be filled afresh with the Holy Spirit today. Let's pray. Father, we see in your word the rise of the prophets. We see how, how jealously you guarded what they said. And we see here in the book of Acts how you birthed the church, a church grounded in the presence of Christ, grounded in the word of God and grounded in the, the power of the Holy Spirit. May we today be grounded in the word May we be in the presence of Christ and may we be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I pray that for everyone who's joined with me now in this Bible reading. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've got a question or a comment, leave it there in the comment section. And when I can, I'll get to it and I'll try to respond. And if you are able to give this a thumbs up, please do. If you haven't yet subscribed to YouTube, or subscribe, join YouTube and subscribe to this, please subscribe. That'll help get the word out as well. When more people subscribe and more people like, it causes YouTube to put this up, sort of up further in, in people's searches. So thank you for doing that if you have done that. And I'll see you tomorrow for our next daily.